Fakataka te hau ki te uru, whakataka te hau ki te tonga, kia mā kina kina ki uta, kia mā tara tara ki tai, e hi ake ana atakura, he tio, he huka, he hauhu, ti hei mauri ora. That's get ready for the westerly and be prepared for the southerly. It will be icy cold inland and icy cold on the shore. May the dawn rise red tipped on ice, on snow, on frost. I think so, Nick. Lovely, thank you. And we're kicking off today with asparagus tart and muffins, carrot and apple muffins with gorgeous spring blooms. So, Cathy, I'm just going to hand over to you, I think. Um, I have cunningly pre prepared and I have got a cup of brown sugar. You'll get this recipe later. And a cup of oil, not olive, just this one's rice bran. Um, so there's no particular taste to rice corn, it's very mild. You could use sunflower or something like that. I'm going to crack an egg into there. Um, unfortunately not my own eggs, but um, two eggs actually. And then we're going to beat it quite literally. Up. With my handy egg beater, which I love. So this is a rosary beater, everybody. Got it from the op shop. Everyone should have one. It's a marvellous tool. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of lower essence into that. And this is a really lovely recipe because they keep well. They store well in tin. You could freeze half of them. They're fairly good for you. I'm going to put the grated carrot. That's a little bit over a cup. You could, when zucchini start to come into season, you could also use zucchini. And you know, when they get really big um, and rather dull, make these muffins with a huge narrow of zucchini. They go really, really well. So and it goes. And I'm going to scrape that off. Um, and an apple, which I have previously grated. So, and that goes, these are a very moist muffin. And I think after years and years and years of cooking, it's me. I think these are the best muffins ever. I'll take that away. And I'm going to add a little bit of coconut. It's an optional. And I have some walnuts as well. Simple, simple. And then the flour. It's a cup and a half. Into the flour, I'm going to put some salt, half a teaspoon. Um, I'm going to add some cinnamon, which I think is my favorite spice. And you could add some ground up ginger, Essentially, you're making really a carrot cake in muffin form. I'm going to put a little bit of extra baking powder to get a good rise on them. But this is self raising flour here. And so it should rise quite nicely. The oven has been put on, it's 175 degrees. And um, we're doing the muffins first because we want to decorate them. And the whole thing about spring that there's lots of lovely edible flour there. And I want to be very clear that there's a lot of flowers which are definitely not edible. They are poisonous. So we'll be going through that quite carefully. And um, I've been popped outside this morning. I've picked some hibiscus. Very lucky on the island and in Tamaki Makora because we've got hibiscus all through the year. And they are edible. I don't know if you can see my bowl, but I'm just gently folding it. It's a rule of baking that the less you mix something, the less tough the cake or pancake or crepe is. So we try and mix fairly quickly, just folding that in. Um, and it's almost ready. It's got lots of goodies in here. Apples, carrots, walnuts, a bit of protein from the egg. If you're vegan, 
use the um, linseed or fat seed and you grind it. And for every egg, you put a tablespoon of water and a little bit um, less of linseed. So about a tablespoon to tablespoon and let it sit for a while and then use that for your eggs and it will bind your mixture together. Right, okay. That was easy. That was almost too quick. I'm just going to have a quick check and make sure I got all my ingredients in there. Yep, sugar. Don't admit the sugar. They won't be that delightful if you do. Humans do rather like sweet things. And so I have greased my muffins. These, unfortunately, are rather bigger than my normal muffin trays because I've used my muffin trays at work. But so I grease that with a little bit of greased bird paper and um, some butter. You could use oil as well. Same methodology, or you could use a clean cloth and do that. And we are going to really half fill these. Um, I might require slightly a bigger spoon, she said, hopefully. No, okay, well, we're going to go. So um, just make sure that all the flour is mixed in. Sometimes there's a bit at the bottom. And you can see I could do with a bigger spoon. So we'll go to find that. Hold on. Yep, that's better. Here we go. It's just quick. Now I've also got these silicone um, little flower pots and a couple of hearts. And I think these silicone shapes are really, really good. So you don't have to grease them. You don't have to use the paper um, cupcake things. And cut Kaylee, our wonderful expert on composting will tell you that a lot of those colourful cupcake papers are not really compostable because they've got some coating on them. Right. Now you may hear some voices upstairs because we've got uh, Jack and Ella here and they're studying. What's today? Sometimes these, zoo, these lockdown days just go from one to the next and the only difference is the next Zoom meeting. I hope everybody's managed to get in who wanted to get in, but we are recording this. So there we go, evenly, evenly put out into the trays. Um, I could have used those little silicone shapes. I'll do a few of those. And I'm going to put them into the oven, just give them a little bit of a jiggle so that they settle nicely. Then they go into my oven, 175, and I'm going to put them in for 20 because those are quite big muffin trays. Maybe just Timer on, and then we'll put the rest of the mixture. When you use the silicon trays, they're quite floppy. So it's really good to put them on a baking sheet. Or in this case, we're going to put them into um, onto the pizza tray. If you find that your mixture is too dry or too wet, add in some more um, carrot if you've got it, or a little bit more flour. And use all your mixture, because you don't want it going into your wastewater system, as our wonderful Natalia will tell you, you don't want too much fat, oil, or bits and bobs going into the septics. Okay, so there we go, that was super quick. I think there's a bit of a record in muffin making, right? And they go, the rest of them, Okay, now, a little bit of a um, wipe up for this top. Oh dear, here we go. Um, edible flowers, quick lesson before we do the asparagus tart recipe. Um, and a word on asparagus. So at the moment, it's just coming into season. So there's all sorts of different prices on the island. So um, from I hear, about eight dollars right through to 5.99 at the supermarket and if anybody's grown asparagus we'd love to hear from you and um, have some tips i'm really really keen to get an asparagus bed in i understand that you get asparagus ready to pick in a couple of years and you never go short of asparagus again but over to edible flowers um hibiscus roses unsprayed if you're picking flowers from the side of the road, just be aware that you should wash them and it's better to pick 
in your own garden or in other gardens where you know it's not sprayed or dogs haven't been passed and you just didn't eat. So we've got these beautiful calendria. We've got, um, if you can see that, can you see that in the, no, that is um, lavender. A friend of mine told me that she makes her own furniture polish, Queen Victoria's lavender furniture polish. So we'll try and get that recipe for you because there's a lot of lavender on the own. These are geraniums, and you know that there are so many colours of geraniums, dark reds, bright reds, pink, cerise, that's just gorgeous. Um, and we have at the moment our um, nasturtium, which are growing all over the island. So those are, those are the sweeter ones. Nasturtium I use for salads really, and savouries. But again, mint leaves, you want to get a green when you decorate. And I've already made my icing, which is just a bit of cream cheese, a bit of icing, and a squeeze of lemon or lime juice. But you can do a vegan one with coconut yogurt um, and the same sort of recipe. And again, just do it to the consistency you like. You don't want it too runny, you don't want it too thick. And when you ice, um, it's quite nice to have a knife and a little bit of warm water so that you can keep everything smooth. Okay, um, before you actually do, you know, eat your flowers, do have a quick Google and make sure that you know what flowers you're using. Daylilies, the, the flower is also edible, as are most magnolias. Don't know about the tropical magnolias, but have a look at it. And just Google and make sure you're eating the right flower. Or perhaps we could run. When everything's level one, maybe we could run a little edible flower tour of a garden. That would be great. Okay, asparagus tart. This is super, super simple. Um, you need one egg. Like the shells. If anybody has any questions, Beth? Live name, just ask. Um, one egg, whole egg. We're giving our eggshells to our next door neighbor who dries them and puts them into the garden, or um, we can also put them into it. We're a little bit, albacashis are a bit full at the moment, and I'm really wanting to get on to the next level of gardening by putting kashi, mixing it with two, is it out? I'd say two tablespoons of cream cheese. And the cream cheese um, is, you could use mascarpone, you could use sour cream, anything like that. It will work. Right, so another lovely brochure we've eaten. And here we go. But this takes a little bit of more work than that. It's a little bit of a while to get it going. You're going to season this with black pepper. Um, you don't need any salt particularly. I'm going to put some parmesan cheese on top or tasty cheese. And it doesn't look beautiful when you mix this. It sort of just, it doesn't quite blend, but it doesn't really matter for the recipe. I'm using some short savory pastry today because we didn't have any flaky puff. Um, I'm not making pastry, but it's not that difficult if you have a food processor. Um, and there'll be plenty, plenty of tutorials on Google to uh, look for pastry making things. Here's my square, and I'm going to hold up. A lot of pastry unfortunately comes with plastic between it, but you can buy a whole um, round pastry and then roll it out. So here it is. Now, I'm going to score with a sharp knife around the very edges of the pastry. Yes. Do you ever, um, hi Kathy, do you ever make your own pastry? Is that a thing or is it just not really time wise worth it? It is a thing and it's not that difficult. And there's a lot of um, tarts that you can almost do like a self crusting um, sort of base. But, and, and it's as easy as you want it to be. I mean, if you want to make like a croissant sort of buttery, buttery pastry, that can take time because you're layering it with um, loads and loads of butter. I think last lockdown we did that, Lucy, my daughter, did it. And I think the whole thing in its entirety was about eight hours of prep. 
but you can, and for those who have allergies who are gluten free, you can actually order um, pastries without gluten. Um, I think it's a, it's a little company called Allergies in East Tampa, Allergy Free Food. Um, so I'll get you that address actually if anybody does have allergies. So I'm just scoring around the side. If this was puff pastry, when I take it out of the oven, it would be really puffy on those scores. I don't know how it's going to go with short. But um, anyway, let's just finish this bit. I have to say, I haven't made my pastry for a while, so I probably should get back into it because that would take away the plastic, the plastic packaging. Um, I don't know about everybody, but I'm sort of been keeping my soft, clean plastics in various bags, so I'm hoping that that will get back to, um, will be able to take out to the supermarket. So that's, you know, it's not hugely mixed, but it's mixed enough. Okay, taking it away. I'm going to add my black pepper. We, we ran out of pepper forms too. Um, we try and make lists when we go to the supermarket or for square or the serve stuff or fruit and veg. Because, and we, we're also planning our meals. So we've got them written up. We don't always stick to them, but we try our best. Now, asparagus. So as I say, they'll get cheaper as we come into season. But my mum always did this, and I'm thinking that other mums and dads did it too. But she always went like that and broke off the woody bit at the end and put that aside. And we made soup out of it. So it's very simple to make a woody asparagus soup and you put it through the blender so you don't have any too much fibre. But in order to prepare this tart, I'm going to cut through. You can easily do this on the board. I do this like this. Always had done. Um, I think it's quite interesting these days. A lot of people don't peel apples with knives. I don't think we had one of those peeling devices when I was young. And we all these days are lovely to have one of these. So you could use this. Um, but for me, I'm trying to get quite a thin asparagus slice because I'm not going to pre cook the asparagus. I'm just going to put it on top of the tart. And it's going to look I hope, like an asparagus garden. Um, so first of all, let's spoon our mixture into, Mike, I might get you to pass me a spoon. We have a quite unusual um, kitchen table in that, we, that it's got drawers in the side and all of our spoons are in that area. So I'm going to give it another quick mix. See, it's quite pretty, doesn't really matter. And just spoon it onto your pastry. Try to use the whole lot. If you don't use it, you can use it in a quiche or something later. But try and spoon everything on. Um, there we go. As I say, it doesn't matter that it's quite lumpy because they will melt down. Smooth it over all the, to your edges, not quite to the edge. And now, the exciting bit, and I wonder if you can see that. Mike, can they see this area here? I'm going to arrange my pre-cut asparagus in a very attractive sort of tree-like way or under the tart. I think it was you, Beth, who pointed out that you... It was. It was me. I'm just wondering, actually. I'm watching you now to see what you're going to do. <laughs> yeah, so I'm taking your advice on board, Beth. I have decided, so some people like the tip of the asparagus the most. Um, so um, Beth suggested that it wouldn't be fair if the tips were all down one end. So I have taken to putting tips both ends now. Um, there we go, I'm gonna put, there we are. So everyone gets a tip. Um, and when I serve this tart, this by the way is a silicon um, piece of, um, baking paper, but it's living, and you can use this again. Again, I use it for cookies, I use it for um, things that are difficult, I may need to be difficult, and then you don't have quite baking paper, which is quite nice, isn't it? Really? Um, so, I tip that in one for you, maybe bottom tip, and you know, you can make it if you had later on, you could sort of decorate it with. Um, these sorts of flowers and make it even prettier. 
So, and if you have some capsicum in the garden, um, you can also put strips of capsicum to make it really colourful and pretty. But that's, that's probably enough. So I'm going to have two meals from this asparagus. Quite often I do two tarts with one bunch of asparagus. Um, and then, as I say, make a simple soup. Fry your onions with the asparagus chips and olive oil. Add in a nice stock. You could put some cream or coconut cream. And then you've got three meals out of one bunch of asparagus. Nothing is Hi, Kathy. Is there an ingredient that you would use? I'm just thinking about um, what the vegan alternatives are for some of these recipes. Um, the you, know, vegan, got... you can make vegan quiches, um, and it's possibly a little bit more complicated. You would be using a coconut base, I think. Um, and let's research that because. Well, for the asparagus tart, you could do really very much like a pizza, couldn't you? You could do a really um, olive oil, maybe mixed with a bit of garlic, um, paint that on, and um, maybe you could make some cashew nut cheese to have with it as well. I'll research it. That one, that one could be a little bit of a thing. Now, so we're finished here. This one last tip um, I'm going to place. And then I'm going to put a little, I happen to have a lemon infused oil, and I think possibly we should be making lemon infused olive oils um, ourselves, just like furniture ish, because there's so much, I guess it's time as well, but it's not hard to make infused oils. Now, last but not least, I'm going to grate a little bit of, um, and this is where I'm going to second grater. But instead, I have a very small grater, my mini grater, a little bit of parmesan on top. You could use tasty cheese. I wonder what is everyone apps. So, is, did everyone get a takeaway this week? I know that um, our family were very keen and they went to two fat buns. And I see that the vineyards as well are doing. Um, Oh, time to check muffins, they're not quite done. We've got seven or eight minutes on them. And when these go into the oven, I'm going to put them up at 180. Pastry quite likes a hot oven. So it's kind of important. Quite often when I do um, pastry like the pide pastries, which I showed you before, that's 200 and pizzas are 220. So different, different things, different um, oven. Rule of thumb in this house, if you don't know, if you don't find a cooking temperature, it is 175. I say it quite frequently. Okay, so I'm going to check the lower muffins who are smaller, and they look like they're done. You don't really want to ice a warm muffin because it will just um, drip off. So, um, how, to, how to tell if muffins are done? So you put your finger on top, and if it bounces back, it's usually done. The other way you can do it is to get a, um, a, a, a small um, wooden, I'm looking for one quite desperately, a small wooden toothpick, which I had around, like there's some toothpicks in the far drawer. So you can pop a toothpick in, Comes out without any mixture on it, it's usually done. Otherwise, I'm not going to use these, but a bamboo thing. This is my skin coming off this, so I'm not going to use that. But toothpick or the pressing down. And so these smaller muffins and the smaller containers are definitely done. And so we'll probably be icing those while we're waiting for the tart to cook. Thank you, Mike. I've got a lot of toothpicks now. Some reason we often get people bringing us to fix it. Okay, so there we go, it's done. And really, these are, muffins are pretty jolly hard to, um, to do badly. And I think without being a bit skitty, they are probably one of the favorite things I make. So we'll put those off here, here, and here. 
and put this tray back in the oven. The other muffins, a little bit more time. Um, and other things to do with asparagus. Some of you may know my um, son's favorite recipe, which is a lemon cream pasta dish. Very simple, three ingredients. I think it's cream, stock cube, and lemon. Very easy. So um, you can put your asparagus tips into that dish, and it's delicious. You can also use asparagus in stir fries. It's, if you like asparagus, it's pretty well endless how you can use it. Right, okay. Now we're waiting. Any questions? What do you see? Yes, um, Lynette wanted to know what you were looking forward to. She didn't catch that last word. Looking forward to a lockdown, apart from seeing people and doing high conscious. Um, I think human interactions. I mean, we've been trying to get people on Messenger and having you know meals with people in Riverton, down South Island most nights, but I think it'd be really nice to give a friend a hug and um, to cook for people. I mean, we've we had turns in this house and we had four in our bubble. So we're very lucky because I'm very aware that there's a lot of single um, bubbles to one person. And yeah, to cook for people, to me, it's just one of the most beautiful human interactions and to eat for them and speak for them. So, um, that's my big thing. And what about everyone else? I'm also looking forward to going to other people's gardens. I'm looking forward to getting back to the sustainability centre and having you cook for me, Kathy. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to look at these muffins. They're still taking a wee while. So what we might do is just put this in and this takes, muffins take about 20 minutes. The asparagus tart probably should be ready in about 20 as well. Depends on time. Oh, decisions, cooking decisions, my favorite. Um, I'm gonna put it in. And I'm gonna move around the muffins, that's what I'll do. I think the asparagus tart should go at the top of the oven. And it goes. So there we go, I've got my silicon. Uh, baking thing on a pizza tray and we are going to put this time is finished in three so I'm going to put it on 20. Now, do, do people do cooking without timers? I can't do that. I quite often use my phone um, and Siri on it and uh, Jeff, uh, one of our fantastic cooks at Kai Cafe. He's great at just saying, Siri, timer on for 10 minutes, timer on for two, timer on for three. Works really well. Because you know, if you're if you're doing other tasks and um, helping people along with cooking, it's just you need reminding um, what's in the oven. Because there's nothing sadder than burning stuff when you've gone to a lot of trouble. Um, I haven't priced out the morning glory muffins, but I think they're probably a fairly reasonable cake and they're a really pretty cake. You can also use the same recipe to make a whole cake. Um, and yeah, I think I'm looking forward to making some cakes for people. Right, I'm gonna get out my um, little heart here. Hopefully it'll come out nicely. Usually it's good to leave muffins um, for about 10 minutes once they've come out of the oven and um, they kind of compact well and if I had and I have no idea I suspect this might be at the Kai kitchen too no idea where my cake wax are which is very sad um, anyway if you're using a muffin tray just go around with it gently with a knife um, to get before you try and get your muffins out don't just tap the back of them it may not work, particularly when you're not using um, little cupcake things. Oh, let me see if it doesn't want to come out. It's probably a bit hot still. Out she come. Just about. I'm kind of looking forward to spring. I just didn't want it all to come out. Let's try and get some. Looking forward to, um, you have to go to the Hamilton Gardens at the moment. 
it. And I said, one thing to eat more gardens, it's just such a beautiful, beautiful garden and it's free. And it's a series of kitchen gardens that will make you probably a little envious, but it's just a wonderful space to be in. So yeah, hoping that we get to level one and hoping that we're all very careful, wear our masks and um, just get out there. But we're lucky on the island, we get to wander around um, lovely roads and wander down the beach. And although the day is not great for that today, um, oh good. looks like those muffins are ready. They'll probably be a bit easier. I kind of, I, I look back at all those cooking shows I used to watch, um, particularly when I was living in the UK, Delia Smith and the like. Okay, so here are our muffins. They are pretty good. Okay. And now I'm going to turn up my oven slightly. So I've got a little bit of a problem turning up this oven. This oven, when you when you turn it on, it throws everything at getting to temperature really quickly. So you have to be very careful, otherwise you'll find yourself grilling uh, the top of something if you put it in um, too soon before the oven signals that it's ready. And Mike, I'm going to need a knife. Oh, hold on, here we go. Here's my knife. There is a knife. And how's our time? Oh, good. We've just got time to ice something if we can get it out properly. Okay, out it comes. Move that. Got two little muffins to degrade. I'll wait for that to get a little bit cooler. So, icing. Then she's icing. I'm going to get a cleaner. I'm just going to quickly wash that one. And grab Dita. Over there. Yep. And I'm going to, as I said, quite good to have a hot little, little, little um, container of hottish water. Or at least water to do your icing with. My water is not hot, I have to boil that, it will take me a while. Okay, so I'm smoothing it on so it's, and I think pretty well, I'm not big on icing. There are some people in my household who love sweet things, not me. Okay, so here's a quick little example, and let's bring our flowers in. Um, you know, you could do something as simple as just taking one rose and putting it on top. What's really good to do is to have a pair of tweezers. I'm just going to put a little rose petal and then a little bit. I'm going to just break that little bit off. A few people joined us um, partway through, Kathy, um, so I'm not quite sure who got all of the news around what flowers are edible and what aren't. Um, <laughs> so could you just do a quick run through of the ones you know are and possibly some that you know definitely aren't? Okay, so um, yes, I'm not telling anybody to eat their freesias or their clivias or their bird of paradises. Are paradise flowers, I know. Um, but what is edible? We have the geranium family. Geraniums grow fantastically on the side, and you don't have to do anything to them. Um, you ignore them. So we've got a whole variety of colours in the geranium family. Reds, light pinks, I mean, it just goes on endlessly. The hibiscus family. Lavenders. Roses. Um, these lovely little calundria flowers, I pronounce it, I think I'm pronouncing it wrongly. 
and you've got nasturtiums. These are kind of peppery though, so I wouldn't use them for baking. Plus you've got your usual mint leaves, which always look really pretty, I think, on um, a cake. And um, Kathy, if you live from somewhere like I do, where everything's sprayed and the flowers are all commercially bought, are those also safe to, you know, like I got some geraniums, would I sprinkle a few in a salad or would that be unadvisable? And then that, if I was you, my dear, I would be um, growing some flowers on the balcony if I could. Because you... Orchid, orchids, but I don't think they're edible. Yes. That, well, <laughs> you wouldn't want to wreck them that way either. What about holy basil? I love the holy basil flowers and everything. What, the they, little white, what, little white flowers? The holy basil is the Thai basil. Yeah, so the basil flowers would be quite good. Okay. Oh, I I've got basil. I've got my herbs on the balcony and I've got orchids, but um, yeah. Okay. Um, but, you know, go through, just, just borrow, and borrow is not going to work for you either. Um, I think, just go, Google it, see what's edible in a more tropical climate. And okay. there, but no, I wouldn't be using any commercial flowers on my food. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I thought that would be the answer. <laughs> Unless you knew they were totally organic, which they probably won't be. Yeah. No. And we have island-wide fogging anyway, so I wouldn't trust anything I could pick either. So. No. <laughs> That's the butterfly lavender, which is beautiful. So I'm just going to put a bit of that on. But, I mean, I told the kids years ago, you know, less is more when you come to decorate, and I've completely filled up my tube with flowers. But it is so pretty, and um, if you're really into it, you can have a lot of fun um, doing. I don't know who's been to Midland Fridays. Um, that was in Auckland. I think she had three different cafes, and her food. When you walked in that cafe, all you saw was flowers all over the food, and so she made and she used to be a hat maker so it kind of explained her artistic sort of way with flowers i'll see if i can get one of these out they're not proving easy to remove today but you know that, that's the joy of being a live cook um, and having a few difficulties removing one's muffins i should really wait until they're completely cold but i'll give it a sorry did you say with silicon that you don't have to grease it first and you don't need the paper casings yeah. Okay. Okay. Didn't know that. Thank you. I mean, you know, again, I, I just happened to have had these and I found these in the op shop. So they're really cute little flower pot things. So you can love these flower pot. Um, but it's, yeah, they come in and they look to last for years. I think I've had those heart ones for about 10 years and um, they keep on keeping on. But let's see if we can get these out. You can get, so there is unwaxed, unbleached paper cups, but talking to Kaylee and looking at all, there's a lot of greenwashing out there, of course, and I've got access to a compost. I've got, I, sometimes I use um, things on my fire, which maybe have slightly waxy edges, but if you, if you haven't got access to a compost, it's not good to use those things. Um, Kaylee's actually joined us, Kathy. So, Kaylee, you're you're here. Could you give us any tips on on those yeah. sorts of paper cases? Good, Kaylee. We're just talking about paper cups for um, baking. We can see and her, but we can't hear her. <laughs> right. I'd really quite like to have my. Um... Okay. Yes, I have success. It's coming out. Right, very brilliant. Okay, so now I can do a nice big one and hopefully get some hot water. Okay, but what we'll do is we'll... Oh, maybe I'll just put the jug on. Um, what we'll do is we'll put some info in, on Facebook, um, Resources Trust, about what is compostable in terms of baking. Because again, you can buy unbleached greasewood paper, but is it any better um, in terms of being compostable? Or does it go straight into landfill? And which is a, not a good thing. 
So we've got a nice big one now. So we can do a, and I'm boiling the jug so I get some hot water. Um, for icing, again, I'm not a sweet tooth, so I much prefer the yogurt bit and not the icing sugar bit. But um, you could use coconut, desiccated coconut, and a little bit of cream cheese if you don't want to add um, too much icing sugar. Add a little bit of vanilla, and if you've got a vanilla pod, even better. Flavor it with lemon or lime. We're coming to the end of, I'm coming to the end of my limes, which is so sad, but I've got a whole lot ready to put into preserves, and I've frozen some lime juice. So, um, at least that'll keep us going for a little while. And the hot water is ready. And if anybody wants to ask me questions, please do, because we're coming to the end of our hour. If you're doing these things with kids, you will get endlessly um, sticky, just saying. And that's all right, because cooking is messy. So here we go. Jack made chocolate cupcakes yesterday, which were incredibly sweet. And I think he's eaten a lot. Um, that's in one day. So there we go. You can make it as smooth as you like. As I say, the hot water is going to allow for a bit more smoothness, and it's going to be easy. Check that tart. Tart is just about ready. Because it's short pastry, more uh, less flakiness, it is not going to puff up like a lovely flaky. So I'm going to put, oh, whole flour. That's easy. And that's pretty well done then, isn't it? Do we need anything else? I don't know if you see that. Isn't that pretty? Simple but pretty. Um, what else would I add? I'm tempted to add more of those in lavender beds. Just because they're so pretty. And food has to, um, I'm doing a course, Mental Health and Nutrition, and they're talking at the moment in this part of the course about people who are ill, who go into hospital being uh, malnourished, and they usually become more malnourished when they're in hospital because people don't spend the time with them, with patients, to see if they're actually eating properly. Often the food is not very attractive, um, and appetites are low because people are ill. And we really have to pay a lot more attention to our diets, I think. Now, if I had another mint leaf, oh, I do. I just pop them. Just for a little bit. Here we go. And that's a bit campaigns of me, but you guys will have heaps of time and you'll be able to make really beautiful things. Um, then if I didn't use flowers, I'd use things like dried apricots, cut small, uh, red currants, dried, um, little bits of um, nuts, just to make it, you know, more interesting. Right, okay, now I'm gonna remove the flowers, all edible. Oh, by the way, another edible thing here in Aotearoa is kawakawa. So you can make tea from kawakawa, and I have also put these at the bottom of loaves and cakes, just one or two small leaves. And it just flavours the cake in quite a beautiful way, uh, I think. There's an aroma. They say that um, you should always pick for your tea, which is supposed to be healing and calming. You should always pick the cow cow with insect holes in it because that means that it's the best. So there we go, a plate of um, in that way. And they look beautiful, Kathy. Um, and just to let everybody know, we will be sending around the recipes, so you don't have to make lots of notes if you haven't done so already. Um, and we will just put them around on the email so that you can see what to do later. It's done. So very simple, very few ingredients. Did I actually take the lemon oil? I can always put lemon oil on later. But um, just let it cool for a little while. And then I use a pair of scissors to divvy it up for the family to eat. Serve it with a nice little salad. Um, and it all looks, I think, very pretty. So there we go. And almost the end of now. We, we're not going to eat together today. We did try that last week with a different mix. Um, and did our uh, Kai Conscious carrot here. 
for that. So, but today we can do another karaoke if you like. Yeah. Up to you. Before we eat. Do we have to stop at one? Yes. No, we don't. Um, but we are very much nearing that point. I think that it looks like most people aren't cooking along right now, so no need for the kai karakia. You can do it when you eat yourselves, but I can definitely close off with one. I'm going to add a little bit more back pepper just because I love the back pepper. I think, really um, I think my family have been cooking, um, but I think that they use the puff pastry, actually, so I'm keen to see what our lunch is going to look like. <laughs> I've got four minutes left to go on the timer, so that was slightly less than 20 minutes. So just be aware to check it. Make sure it's cooked underneath. And um, the asparagus should be reasonably tender. The, the, the thinner you cut it, the quicker it cooks, of course. Wonderful. Then, I'm quite, quite hungry now. <laughs> me too. Okay, well, as it's nearly one o'clock, Livne, do you have a closing karakia for us? I do. Um, this one is a karakia fakamutunga, a closing karakia. Um, and this one is the first time I'll be saying this one, so excuse any errors. But he uh, karakia fakakapi. Kia fakairia te tapu, kia wātea ai te ara. Kia turuki fakataha ai, kia turuki fakataha ai, homie huie tai kie. And that one means restrictions are moved aside, so the pathway is clear to return to everyday activities. Wonderful. Right. Thanks, Livne. Oh, and thank you so much, Kathy. That was so wonderful just to sit and watch you cook there. I do wish I was sitting in your kitchen so that I could eat that delicious food in front of you as well. Absolutely. Oh, and thank you, everybody, who's um, come back to see us again from last week, as well as the newcomers and all the way from Singapore. That's wonderful to see, too. It's nice to see that there's messages traveling all over the world about cooking at home during lockdowns and and using those edible flowers. Um, so I think that that really brings us to a close. And yeah, again, thank you so much, Kathy. Um, we really appreciate your time and hospitality, inviting us all in to, um, to learn how to cook in your kitchen. That's wonderful. Okay, so that just leaves us to say kia ora. Thanks, Kathy. Thank you, Kakite Ano.